Well, hey there. What's in your wallet? What do you keep with you at all times? What do you depend on? What do you carry with you in this journey that we call life? This is the word picture that we've been using these last four messages about Paul's letter to that little house church in the town of Philippi. So what's in your wallet? Is your wallet stocked with a heart full of the love of God and the love for each other? And of course, the each other Paul's talking about is the people of the church, the people you worship and do life with, the followers of Jesus, the Jesus community. Is that in your wallet? And then there's your mind. Do you daily carry the mind of Christ, the mind of Jesus who humbled himself, who gave up his rights, privileges, and power as God to be one of us, obedient to the Father? Do you carry the mind of Christ every day in your wallet? And then what about emptying out the wallet, emptying out what you carry with you every day of the things that are not needed, that, that weigh you down, that take you away from God. The belief that faith in Christ is inherited, or the favor with God is earned. Take those out. Leave them out. And then what you carry every day and what you leave out and take out every day is all because our focus is on our ultimate destination. <laughs> Pack only what you need for that journey. See, we were made to be like Jesus in body and mind. And one day when Christ returns, our bodies will be like his, never failing, incorruptible, when heaven and earth are once more united as they were at the beginning. Keep what you need in your wallet for that destination. Oh, and of course, the destination, the kingdom of God has already begun. We're waiting for its ultimate fulfillment. So now we're ready for chapter four, the conclusion of the letter. So let me read that for you. It's Philippians chapter four, verses one to 13. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord. In this way, I urge you, Yodia, and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind of the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. So rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say it, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I'm referring to being in need, for I've learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little. I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and being in need. I can do all things through him that strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share in my distress. Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable to you, my rock, my redeemer, and friend.
Okay, so back to first one of Philippians chapter 4. Now, therefore, brothers and sisters in Christ, stand firm in the Lord like this. In other words, here's how you do it. And the very first thing Paul talks about is Yodia and Syntyche. Do whatever's necessary to be together of the same mind, like the mind of Jesus. Mend whatever it was that keeps you at odds with one another. Seems there was a rivalry and a tension between these two women that was enough that word got out of the community, got out beyond the house church in Philippi and made its way to Paul in jail. <laughs> Can you imagine being one of those two? I mean, we, we might have wondered up till now why Paul wrote this letter. In Paul's other letters, you can always see the reason he wrote right in the first paragraphs, but not in Philippians. So far, Philippians has lived up to its name as the joyful letter. But now we find out what might have been the reason Paul wrote. It turns out the tension between these two women was probably the reason Paul wrote the letter. Yes, I know both of them worked for the good news of Jesus. Both of them did good work. Yet this tension was enough that it even got back to Paul in Ephesus while he was in jail, and the conflict between the two was enough for Paul to write the letter. Do you know anyone in that situation? Or have you seen it? Two or more people at odds with one another, clashes in conflict. Of course, not just women, but men as well. Paul says, I plead with you who are at odds with one another to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companions in the faith, to help fellow believers who are, who are at odds with one another to be unified, since you have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. Paul challenges each of us with this question. What can you do? personally, to help mend situations like this. See, our relationships matter. Christianity following Jesus is personal, yes, but actually it is just as much, if not more, about our relationships not only with God, but also with each other. So, mend relationships wherever and whenever needed. Don't let it fester. I mean, there may be a need for a cooling off period, but don't let it go on. Mend relationships with fellow Jesus people. And then what? Well, rejoice. Paul comes back to that again and again and again. Rejoice. Celebrate. It's the inoculation against getting sidetracked and pulled away from the love of God. Rejoice and be at peace. Peace with each other. <laughs> we got a dose of that with Yodia and Syntyche. And then be at peace within yourself. How? In every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. See, prayer is the key to peace. Peace that guards our hearts and minds. Paul is talking about heart and mind, and all of us, all of us, heart, mind, emotion, body, soul, our guts. The key to peace is prayer. Tell God about it. Let it out. Don't hold it in. It's different than talking to yourself. Don't mistake talking to yourself with talking to God. Now, People much wiser than I can tell you a whole lot more about prayer. But let's just start here. Do you remember the 12 disciples? They saw Jesus going off to talk to his father regularly to pray. And they saw it enough times that they finally asked him to teach them to pray. So Jesus said to start by talking to our father, our Abba, our 
daddy. None of the formal, fancy prayers that they would have seen from the professionals. Our Father, who's in heaven. So in other words, talk to Abba about wanting to be with him and that his way is best. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Talk to Abba about daily needs. Give us this day our daily bread. Talk to Abba about daily struggles, both internal temptations and the stress of evils of the world. Peace with each other, peace within yourself. And then Paul comes back to it again. The peace of God that comes through prayer will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Heart and mind, whole person. He reminds us in verses 8 and 9 to set our minds on character qualities and values that nearly everyone would endorse. But it's by the power of Christ that we can. It's a reminder from Paul that you cannot change feelings, but you can direct and change what you do with your mind. And that will change your heart and your emotions. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on the character qualities of God. Set your mind on God himself rather than the stuff of this world. Put that into practice and, again, rejoice. Paul doesn't get tired of reminding us of that. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say it, rejoice. Now, the last word, the last sentence of Paul's letter to the Philippians. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you in your spirit. Amen.